All right, so this is a quick video to show how to compile the awesome Dynamo package DynaShape from source. So the easiest way is to go to Long's uh, Twitter, and then you can navigate to his GitHub. Uh, this is what I did. From here, you could go ahead and download the zip of the source code. So just download that whole zip file. From there, what I typically do is I will have in my documents folder, so Visual Studio, documents, projects. So I'll have a bunch of projects in here. So what I now have is a DynaShape master folder, which I just unzipped right into this directory. From here, we can go in and double click on the DynaShape uh, solution file and it'll open up. So one of the things that we need to do, so right away we have some references that are broken. Uh, that's just kind of typical. Uh, that's kind of something that happens. So what we're able to do is add those references to this project. So what we'll do is add references. I have them in my recent files, but these references live in the program files. So what we need to do is add DS core nodes, Dynamo core, Dynamo core WPF, which I should be able to browse for. Let's see. Let's go to Dynamo core 1.3. Dynamo Core WPF, I'll add that one. Dynamo Services, I have in my recent. And then we'll ignore that Helix one right now in the math one. And then we'll go for Proto Core and Proto Geometry. And I clicked on the wrong Proto Core. Proto Geometry. Once we click OK, these will not be yellow anymore. So those are fixed. From there, what we need to do is we actually need to add something called a new get package. So if I right click on the DynaShape um, project here at the top, I can go ahead and do manage NuGet packages and we can search for a few things. First thing that we'll search for is mathnet.numerics. Uh, and I typed a few too many. So we'll do a search for mathnet, click on it once, and you can install this package into your solution. So it's very similar to like installing packages within Dynamo, honestly. So that's a new get package. From there, we also need to add the Helix Toolkit WPF. We'll just search for that. And it'll actually be the second one, which is a smaller download too. So from there, we'll go in and install that one. It'll think for a moment. Uh, it's still, it's not the smallest package. It still has a little bit of stuff going on. So that just takes a second to install. Cool. And once that installs, that will no longer be yellow. And it also installed a few others. I'm not even going to worry about that right now. Uh, what we can do is something I always like to do is I'll select all these references. And I'll actually... Go to properties and turn off copy local. Uh, in this case, um, I don't necessarily, well, well, what we'll do is we'll leave that on true because I think we need the math one right now. So what we'll do now is we'll actually right click on the project again and go to properties. So it looks like we have something in here to automatically copy some stuff. This is uh, something that happens after building. Um, I don't I'm not going to use that right now, uh, so I'm just going to delete that. I'll hit save all, and then we'll just go ahead and do build. So build, build solution. What it's going to do is it's going to go through and build the appropriate files that we need. So we see that it says succeeded. So from here, what we can do is let me go to my documents folder. So we need to go to the project folder. And the easier way to do this, actually, is right click on the project and we can do browse and explore once I find it. Open folder and file explorer if I click on the solution. So now we open the folder, we go into bin and we can see all this cool stuff. If I just sort it by the date that it was made, that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, we see that there's a DynaShape DLL, and a MathNet numerics. What we need to do is copy this stuff into an app data folder. So what we'll do is open another file explorer. And we'll just type in percent app data percent. From here we'll go into Dynamo, 
I'm working in a Dynamo Sandbox version for this stuff. So I'm going into Dynamo Core 1.3 packages and we'll make a new folder called DynaShape. From here, we just have to mimic another folder structure. So bin, DYF, and extra. So I'll do that too. So bin, DYF, and extra. So in bin, we paste those DLL files. Cool, we have those going on, that's good. What we also need to do is go back to this folder and go into manifest files and copy a few of these things. So we need package.json and that'll actually go out here into this folder. So we have package.json and then we also need the customization. So let's find that one. Cool. And we'll paste that customization in the bin as well. I believe it goes in the bin at least. So let's see. We'll go to another package and just kind of make sure. I just installed this today, so I'm kind of going through it right after I did it. So it looks like we are good. So what we'll do is we'll go back to Dynamo Core, 1.3 packages, DynaShape. We got that, cool. There's one more file that makes this work really awesome. So what we need to do is copy this view extension definition and we need to go into another directory. We need to go into C program files, Dynamo, Dynamo Core, 1.3, view extensions and paste this in there. We'll hit continue. We're not quite done. What we need to do is edit this with a notepad. So I'm going to use notepad plus plus in my case and update this directory to reflect what's on our machine. So if you remember on my machine, if I go back, into app data, Dynamo, Dynamo Core, 1.3, Packages, DynaShape, Bin. That's where this DynaShape DLL lives. So what I need to do is replace all this stuff right here. We'll zoom in and make that a little bigger. Cool, from there we can save it, hit save. Make sure it saves. It is in a path that requires an admin. So we're good. The time is the right time. So that'll point to allow you to be able to manipulate stuff in the background. So now what we could do is we could go in and fire up Dynamo. I'll fire up the sandbox version. I just have a link for it on my toolbar. And I have a file already made. Uh, just mimic this file to be able to use it. He is going to release some sample files to use as well. So feel free to use those once they're released. But once we launch this, I can turn it on periodic. So what we'll do is go to manual first. We'll disconnect this solver, hit run, reconnect it, and then we'll reset it to. That reassembles like the generic box. We switch this to false, we can go to periodic and it starts running for us. So right away this thing's running. I can't explain to you what all this stuff does. Uh, I've just kind of been hacking at it today in my free time, but I just know that it's very promising and awesome. So what we could do is go to the background and actually directly manipulate this thing as well. What I was doing is I was actually like starting to coil it up, which is kind of fun. Um, I constrained it a little further than it was in my example. Um, he'll release some better examples or I'll post this as well but you can just kind of have fun with it so far and it's pretty neat. Uh, some really great work. Uh, I think this will be useful for form finding for things like tensile structures and things like that, but I just wanted to make a video to kind of share how to install it from the source if you're eager and you just want to start messing with it. So I hope that helps everyone else out. If you have any questions, feel free to shout out to me or I'm sure Long would help or anyone else. So uh, thanks for checking it out.